Welcome to the second devlog. It's been a few weeks since the last one and I've added quite a bit in that time. And if you guys are new to the series, I'm working on a low poly exploration game and just sharing that journey. So for the dialogue system, I wanted it to be relatively simple and just straightforward. I didn't want to have a decision branch, sort of like Fire Watches or Skyrim's dialogue, and wanted it to be basically just a linear one-sided conversation to just get straight to the point. I threw together some UI and made a pop-up that'll display the name and dialogue. Then I wrote some scriptable objects and holder scripts and set up an interaction input. After I got that working, it was now time to set up some quests via dialog, and for that I could extend the dialog class and have accept and decline buttons. There are currently three different types of quests, gather, escort, and kill, and I could use the gather type for trading as well as delivery, so a good reusability there. I also added a little reward list on the side to help determine if you want to do that quest or not. So next on the list would be make these NPCs look a little bit more alive. I threw the player model onto some test NPCs and gave them some of the same animations as a player. And I started working on rigid bodies for them as I wanted them to fall to the ground when they die. And with this I came across some cool looking problems but eventually solved them with a few more lines of code but just like, like I admire this thing like what the hell is it? Seriously, how did this happen, Unity? Alright, after I fixed that body part tornado mess, I made a little scene with each of the NPCs at like trading shack, sort of, just to give off the village vibe a little bit more. These aren't the final look, but it works for now as I set up more things around the world. These can be sort of temp NPCs, I guess. After these two commas popped up about adding animals, I just knew I had to do it. I have no patience and I was excited, so uh, yeah, I did it. To get started, I needed to figure out how I wanted to go about making the AI. I could use a simple translate method which just moves an object to a certain point that we set, which will have a big disadvantage and that is that the AI can easily get stuck and doesn't have any obstacle knowledge, unless I wanted to code my own obstacle avoidance. Or I could use navigation mesh, which is a built-in feature in Unity, and basically you just bake the surface of objects into data and the AI will use this data to help with detecting where the AI can and can't walk. So I tested out NavMesh and found that it produces a good foundation for the AI as there's a whole wide range of things I can actually do with it. I also made it so any escort NPCs now use the NavMesh method as they have to follow the player when being escorted. And currently with the animal AI, there's a fleeing action that happens when the player gets too close and isn't sneaking, as well as a wandering action with random stopping and running. And as you can see, I decided that the first animal was going to be a deer, so I got a little creative and started making the model. At first I was going for a little bit more of a usual looking deer with smoother edges, but still low poly, but I didn't really like it so I scrapped it and I made a more cubic and with more floating limbs which really matches up with the style of the player in the world at the moment and it looks really good. And on the animation side of things, I rigged the deer and after a couple of hours of watching footage of four-legged creatures do things, I finally had a couple animations, which aren't perfect, but I like them. And without further ado, here are the brand new deer inside the game.
so I'm really proud about this addition. They work and look great, and I honestly can't wait to add more animals into the world as I want the world to feel like really alive, which leads me to the next addition, some basic enemies. So I copied over the Escort NPC script and changed a few lines and values, and now the enemies can chase down the player when in range, and I've been experimenting with some attacking systems, and I gotta be honest, I haven't completed all of that yet, but I am looking into changing a lot about the combat system, especially with the player and also the enemies, which I hope I can get to work on soon, but for now, there's just some collision detection during the attack sequence for the enemies. And for the first enemy, I remodeled the player to look like an ogre, and sized him up a bit. Um, okay, okay, that, that's a bug. That's a bug. Not, not that, not that big. I then created a spiked bat weapon for him, and made it a random drop when you kill him. So you guys can go running around with this 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 thing is bad it's pretty beast though all right so that's gonna be all for this video if you guys liked what you saw then be sure to like the video and if you want to stay updated on future uploads then feel free to subscribe i'm also going to promote my discord and twitter as i'd really like to gather up a community and have some nice discussions with everybody I've been dealing with my third semester of college these past few weeks and they've been online classes so I've been trying to manage everything equally and seeing all the support from the last video has been keeping me going. So thank you guys for that motivation, I really appreciate it. And as always, don't forget to wash those hands, wear a mask, and don't set forest fires at gender reveal parties. Alright, see you guys next time.